Okay, so welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing the transduction of painful stimuli. Okay, right. Uh, so, we've now discussed how we can activate nociceptors to fire action potentials. We've discussed that the role of the nociceptors, which remember are these receptors for the noxious stimuli within the axon terminal, is merely to somehow uh, produce some sort of excitatory current, a depolarizing current within the axon terminal, which can then be transmitted into uh, the uh, action potential origin portion of the axon, which will then uh, be depolarized, hopefully, enough to fire an action potential, and then that action potential will propagate along the axon and uh, all the way up to the uh, spinal cord. Okay, right, so now what we want to do is study these nociceptors, the receptors for the noxious stimuli, in more detail. Okay, so let's go back to TRIP V1. Okay, so TRIP V1 is an ion channel, okay, which responds to temperature. So let me draw it here. So here it is within the plasma membrane, okay, and when the temperature goes above around 40 to 45 degrees Celsius, uh, what will happen is this trip V1 channel will open, and then it will start allowing sodium and calcium ions to enter the cell. But remember, it is a non-selective cation channel. It's an NSC channel. So it is actually permeable to sodium, calcium, and potassium. It's just at the normal resting membrane potential, the uh, permeability to potassium isn't really that relevant. Okay, now, what trip V1 stands for? is transient receptor, uh, sorry, transient receptor potential vanilloid 1. Okay, and I want to justify the vanilloid there within your name. So transient receptor potential is obvious. This means it produces a transient receptor potential, a transient depolarization of the electrical uh, potential difference across the cell membrane of the axon terminal. The V stands for vanilloid. Okay, and sh I think there should only be one N in that. Okay, yes, only one N. So get rid of that second N that I've put there. Vanilloid, uh, one. Okay, and this actually used to just be called the vanilloid receptor one. So you might have once seen this called the VR1 for vanilloid receptor one. But it's since been renamed transient receptor potential vanilloid one. Okay, now, why is it called vanilloid 1? Well, basically, this channel is uh, sensitive to a molecule which you find within chili peppers, okay? Uh, so, basically, the reason that when you eat a chili uh, that it makes your mouth feel like it's on fire is that the chili has an ingredient in it called capsaicin, okay, which is an example of a vanilloid molecule. Okay, uh, which binds to these trip V1 channels and decreases the temperature at which they will become active. So once the capsaicin is bound to the trip V1, okay, so if I show the capsaicin bound here, basically the temperature at which the trip V1 will activate becomes lower so that it's a normal physiological temperature that will now activate the trip V1 so that all the trip V1 channels in your nociceptors become activated okay and that will trigger the more to fire action potentials within your mouth and uh, that your brain will perceive as the mouth is far too hot Okay, so the temperature within the mouth hasn't actually gone up, it's just that you're activating the same pathways which are activated uh, by noxious heat. Okay, so let's have a look at the structure of capsaicin and then we can see uh, which group makes capsaicin a vanilloid molecule. Okay, and the group that makes capsaicin a vanilloid molecule is known as the vanillyl group. Okay, so we want to see what is the vanillyl group, and we'll do it by looking at the capsaicin molecule. Okay, so the structure of capsaicin then, you have a benzene ring. Okay, so here is the starting of this molecule, and it starts with a benzene ring here. And then off the benzene ring, you're going to have an alcohol group over here, and then you're also going to have a methyl group attached to the benzene ring via an oxygen atom here. Okay, uh, then off the other side of the benzene ring, what you're going to have is a methylene group, like so. Then 
of the methylene group, you'll have a nitrogen atom with a hydrogen coming off. And then this is going to be involved in an amide link. So we'll now have a carbon with a carbonyl group here. So this carbon would have originally been within a carboxylic acid. And it's now bound to that amine group via an amide link here. And then what you have is multiple methylene groups now. So one, two, three, four. And then you're going to have a double bond between this fifth carbon and this sixth carbon here. Okay. And then another carbon over here and two methyl groups coming off that. So this is the structure of capsaicin then. Right, so the vanillyl group then, this portion after which the capsaicin molecule is called a vanilloid, is this group that I'm now circling in red here. So all of this is the vanillyl group, okay, in red here. Okay, so that's why capsaicin is considered a vanilloid molecule, because any molecule which has this vanillyl group, which is now circled in red, is called a vanilloid. So capsaicin is an example of a vanilloid. So that's why this receptor was originally called the vanilloid receptor 1, because it was the receptor that was first identified to be the means by which capsaicin works, basically. Okay, right. So, that's trip V1 now covered then. Uh, what we want to now turn our attention to is other sensors of noxious heat. Okay, and then we'll move on to noxious cold, uh, then uh, mechanical noxious stimuli, and then finally chemical noxious stimuli. Okay, right. So, now let's turn our attention to some of these other uh, noxious heat nosy sensors. Okay, right. So, another example is what's known as TRIP V2, okay? So, another example which is present within nociceptive neurons, which are responsible, of course, to heat, because, of course, not every nociceptive neuron was responsive to heat. So, of course, we're only talking about the nociceptors which do indeed respond to thermal stimuli, okay? Uh, so, in these thermal sensitive um, nociceptive neurons. We've discussed trip V1, which is a key channel which is activated at uh, 42 degrees Celsius or there around. Um, but it's not the only thermal uh, noci sensor, basically. Okay, there are other proteins which will also be activated by too high temperatures. And basically, what was done is an experiment where you took a mouse and you knocked out trip V1, so you took all trip V1 channels out. And if you do that, the mouse can still feel pain induced by uh, too high temperatures, basically. Okay, and it's assumed that a similar thing is true in humans. Of course, that experiment has never been done in humans. Uh, but what that experiment does serve to show us is that trip V1 alone cannot be responsible for all. Um, pain that we get in response to too high temperatures. So it can't be responsible for all the nociception uh, of noxious heat stimuli, basically. There must be other nociceptors that can do the job of trip V1 if uh, trip V1 is knocked out. So let's discuss some of these other ones as well. And it's likely then that all of them work together to produce that receptor potential, which will then drive an action potential in these heat-sensitive nociceptive neurons. So basically, it's not a simple is there just being one channel which opens in response to too hot and that causes the receptor potential which then leads to the um, thermal sensitive nociceptive neuron firing an action potential. Okay, so another example of one of these noci sensors which responds to uh, too hot noxious stimuli is TRIP V2. And again, what this stands for is transient, that's the T, receptor potential, that's the RP, and then vanilloid 2. Okay, so this is the transient receptor potential vanilloid 2. And you might think, oh, so is it uh, sensitive to vanilloids as well? Is it sensitive to uh, capsaicin? Well, the answer is no. This is not sensitive to capsaicin. Okay, so capsaicin will not bind and increase uh, and decrease the uh, temperature at which the TRIP-V2 channel opens. 
so not sensitive to capsaicin. The reason it is called a trip V2 channel is because it is homologous to trip V1. So it has a very similar structure to trip V1, and that's why it's called the transient receptor potential vanilloid 2, rather than because it's actually uh, a receptor for capsaicin like the trip V1. And trip V1 is the only receptor which is res uh, receptive to capsaicin. All the others are then named just because they have a similar structure to trip V1, which is the true vanilloid receptor. Okay, right. Now, it's very similar to trip V1. It opens, and when it opens, it's a non selective cation channel. Okay, so it's going to open and allow sodium ions and also calcium ions and also potassium ions to move through it. And of course, the important ones under normal physiological electrical potential differences across the cell will be the movement of sodium and calcium into the cell to cause a depolarizing current to cause that receptor potential, which will then uh, trigger an action potential in that action potential origin. Okay, now the difference between trip V2 and trip V1 is that trip V2 is activated by slightly higher temperatures than it took to activate trip V1. Trip V2 is generally not activated until you get to around 52 degrees Celsius, so it takes higher temperatures to activate trip V2. But apart from the fact that we require a higher temperature and that this is not sensitive to capsaicin, trip V2 is pretty much just the same principle as trip V1, that it opens a non-selective cation channel and um, that then triggers a receptor potential, which then triggers an action potential. Okay, right. Two more trip Vs then. So there is also trip V3 and trip V4. Now these are even less well understood than trip V2. Okay, so again they have homologous structures to trip V1, hence why they are keeping up this naming system. They are not sensitive to capsaicin, so capsaicin won't trigger them to open. Okay, but they are found on nociceptive neurons, and it is thought that they are going to uh, be sensing heat two noxious heat, basically, and opening them uh, themselves, and then allowing cations to move through them and causing a receptor potential, which then leads to the action potential. Okay, so these are on neurons as well. Same principle as with trip V1 and trip V2. However, there's something a little bit more interesting about trip V3 and trip V4, because they're not just found on neurons. They're also found on keratinocytes, and this is what I was telling you about in the first video. Um, basically, on keratinocytes, you can find both of these channels, trip V3 and trip V4. And basically, when the uh, skin is too hot, these trip V3 and trip V4 channels will open. And what that actually triggers in the keratinocyte is it triggers the keratinocyte to release. ATP. Okay, so remember ATP was one of these chemical stimuli which is capable of activating nociceptors. It's uh, indicative of cell death, basically. It's indicative of apoptosis. So the ATP can then go and activate nociceptors as well. So, this functions as another way by which you can get pain in response to too high uh, temperatures, basically. You also have trip V3 and trip V4 on these keratinocytes. And let me just remind you where a keratinocyte is. These are these cells within the epidermis. So, epidermal cells have these sensors for too high temperatures, at which will trigger them to release ATP, which can then act on nociceptors, basically and trigger uh, nociception. Okay, right, but trip V3 and trip V4 are also found directly on the nociceptor membrane themselves. Okay, right, so the final example of a nociceptor for noxious heat then is in the form of a potassium channel. Okay, now potassium channels, it's a little bit more difficult to understand how they're going to be important in uh, triggering a receptor potential. And basically this final potassium channel is everything in reverse, basically. So in fact, I think I'll call it there for this video because this is going to take quite a long time to explain. We're going to have to talk about uh, membrane potential and how we build up resting membrane potential. So we'll begin with that in the next video and we'll then see how 
heat closing this constitutively open potassium channel will then lead to depolarization of the electrical potential difference, just as if you had opened a usually closed sodium or, pota uh, sodium or calcium channel, okay, such as the trip V1 through trip V4s. Okay, so we'll cover that in the next video.